All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about these uh, Freemasonry, all right, and alchemy and all that kind of stuff. Albert Mackey, the symbolism of Freemasonry, all right. Point within a circle is another symbol of great importance in Freemasonry. But the phallus or lingam was a representation of the male principle only. To perfect the circle of generation, it is necessary to advance one step further. See what's going on here, all right? You understand. The union of the phallus and yoni, all right? So the phallus and the chalice, the phallus and the yoni, the male and the female. All deities of pagan antiquity can be reduced to two different forms of the generative principle, the active or male, the passive or female. Hence, the gods were always arranged in pairs, but the ancients went further, believing that the procreative and productive powers, the male and female powers of nature, might be conceived to exist in the same individual. They made the older of their deities hermaphrodite. They basically combined these male and female gods and goddesses into one god, the hermaphrodite, androgynous god, to denote the union of the two sexes in the same divine person. Good old Marty knows about that. This might even be George here. Like, who knows, right? Oh, look at that. Point within the circle. Here's some uh, point within a circle from some lodge. Minneapolis Lodge number 19. 19 is a good number. They like that number 19. There's the point within a circle right there. And it says G. It's kind of small. There's a G there. For what? For Gaia, all right, inside the triangle. Gaia. There's the square, there's the compass, again, male-female connotations there. There's the Minneapolis Valley Scottish Rite Temple. This used to be a church, a Methodist church, and then the Masons took it over, turned it into a Masonic temple. It's the Double Eagle webpage. Ah, why is that? The Double Eagle Committee. There's a 32nd degree, two-headed eagle, right? Now I've shown the, uh, the rebus, right? I've shown that. That's what it is. Basically, it's the male and the female. It's the rebus. Corona, right there is corona. To lose it all and rise up again, all right, like the phoenix, is the sign of a mason. Now, where did President Trump go on her first trip after the pandemic? He or she went to Phoenix. And where did Smashing Pumpkins begin their reunion tour in 2018? Phoenix, all right, order from chaos, the male and female, the winged entity, the horns, the light, that's the Baphomet, all right, this is from a Masonic uh, website right here, and uh, the cross, breasts, right, breasts, dissolve and coagulate, all right, that's order out of chaos, right now they're dissolving the world, and it's going to coagulate soon, the crown, the kether, the antichrist, the Messiah of Judaism and Kabbalah and Freemasonry. And the eagle symbolism. Sometimes there's only one head, but it represents the same thing. It would kind of freak people out. Russia has the two heads and some of these other... Some countries do use the two-headed thing. Any type of winged bird-like figure is the... Uh, it's, you know, the phoenix, but it's really the uh, pagan gods. Satan and the uh, other rebellious entities, the principalities and powers, do control all the governments in the in the world, actually. All right, that's what they're telling you right here. Then they have their human agents like the uh, Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and the Trumps and the Bushes and all these people, right? And uh, and this is on your U.S. passport, right? I have a U.S. passport. It's, it looks just like it's, this is on my U.S. passport. If you go to any other country, you're seeing the same exact thing, all right? What's the difference? There's no difference at all. There's the uh, Albert Mackey book. Again, the two-handed androgyne, the crown, all that stuff. And there it is again. Yeah, that's kind of the goal right here, right here. We're going to see more of this, all right? It also believed by many that the symbol of the double-headed eagle and its meaning evolved from the symbol of the two-faced Janus. Janus was a god of beginning and transitions. In fact, Trump said, right, the third quarter was, is the, uh, he actually named the third quarter of this year as the uh, transition to greatness, that's what he said. It's a transition to greatness. All right, so we're in a transition to greatness. The rebus is two things, and these two things are one thing, which is called elixir. Know that the secret of the work consists in male and female, an active and passive principle. The dual-natured rebus 
was usually depicted as a two-headed royal figure, also often as a double-headed eagle. All right, it says it right there. Double-headed eagle equated with the alchemical stone of the philosophers. Male, female, Mercury, the androgyne, double-headed eagle. Mysterium, magnum, studium, universali. The aim of the alchemists, wrote Joseph Campbell, was to achieve not a terminal perfection, but a process ever continuing, which their stone, the philosopher's stone, should become at once the model and the catalyst, a process whereby and wherein all pairs of opposites, eternity and time, heaven and hell, male and female, youth and age, should be brought together by something midway between perfected and unperfected bodies. The double-headed eagle, the alchemical rebus or stone of the philosophers, symbolizes this process. The magnum opus or great work of spiritual regeneration. Through its unification of opposites and association with alchemical fire, the path of regeneration and ascent up the tree of life is indicated. Yeah, here's Joseph Campbell, a hero with a thousand faces. In fact, I think I read this book when I was in college. Hey, look, it's Mr. Statue of Liberty. Now, I should read this again because um, there's a very deep, serious significance to wearing a mask. The masks of God, right? Primitive <laughs> mythology. They're making us participate in their their pagan rituals, basically, at the very least, right? Here's a CNN webpage. New World Order may see U.S. lose out. Donald Trump's chaotic strategy. A strategy of chaos. And the purple people eater, right? Unicorn with one eye. The third eye. There's Prince, right? One eye, the third eye. <laughs> I mean, come on. And there's the old unicorn, right? Now, I do believe, um, and this is controversial, but I, I believe Prince was male. Just, you know, look at pictures of him. Look, you can see his bone structure. He's walking around half naked most of the time. Um, but he's so androgynous that he is a, he always has been a transvestite, all right? Uh, there's the mask of God right there, Prince. That is Prince, all right? That's Prince. Now Prince dresses like a woman full time, all right? This is Prince, faked his death tends to be his sister. With a bit of uh, prosthetics, right? They change the nose a little bit. This is basically, it's a mask. It's a mask of God, all right? It's a mask of the pagan gods. Look at those glasses. Who wears glasses like that? Nobody. It's a wig, all right? Maybe uh, put on a few pounds even, but a lot of that's just uh, makeup. And he, I mean, the dude had a movie studio. He lived in a studio that, it was a recording studio, but he also had a movie studio there as well. He's got all this kind of stuff, access to makeup and clothes and hair and costumes, basically, disguises. Look at that brow bone there, man. This is Prince. It's the same person, different disguise, all right? Look at that, how androgynous he looks, right? That's why people think he's an FT. He's so androgynous that people think he's a woman. I think he's born male, all right? But so androgynous that, yes, he's a transvestite. He's always been androgynous, all right? And there's his androgynous wife, who is also born male. That's male to female, transgender. Prince has always been a transvestite, right? There's the sign. What kind of sign were they telling people at the Super Bowl, right? One of the largest uh, pagan festivals in the world. And there's Prince with Mr. Beyonce with the shoulders. And again, Prince with Mr. Beyonce with the shoulders and the arm and the narrow pelvis and a mysterious bulge. And uh, look at this symbol. What is that? Look closely at the icon because there's a lot happening. Most obviously, it merges ancient symbols for men and women, creating a new sexual gender fluid one, uh, kind of like the people who work in the city hall in Minneapolis, a new sexual gender fluid symbol, a new man and woman, a new normal <laughs> right? And then they uh, put that symbol at the Super Bowl. Look at that. It's right there in the Super Bowl. Derives from a combination of the symbols for both male and female. All right? Second witness. Supposedly entered his consciousness during meditation. There's Minnesota, right? There's the purple people eaters, the purple rain, R-E-I-G-N. It all started back here. This video is kind of part two of the previous one. Governor of Minnesota, married to Mr. Rockefeller, and they still control Minnesota, and they, they're they the ones starting these riots to bring order out of chaos. All right, the Hegelian dialectic, 
agenda, centralization of power thesis, manufactured terrorist threat. All right, that's the riots going on right now. The common cold was turned into a manufactured terrorist threat. That's basically what they did. The seasonal flu was turned into a terrorist threat. Antithesis, repressive police state. Okay, we kind of had that already after 9-11, and it just continues to get worse to create a repressive police state. And they got all kinds of tricks up their sleeves. They're going to have more of these, right, and more of this. Synthesis, removal of freedoms. That's the Insurrection Act. Transfer of power from the many to the few. Well, that's kind of already happened, I think. But, uh, I mean, that's this has happened already, but it's, it's even going to get worse. It's going to be unbelievable. In fact, let me show you. Uh, South Korea closes schools again amid coronavirus spike days after reopening. Does this look like an open school? It's basically a prison. I mean, this is like some kind of torture chamber. They're like cows eating food, right? I mean, this is lunchtime in South Korea at a school that was reopened that they've closed again already. It's probably better they close it. These children are traumatized. Can you imagine growing up in a society like this? I mean, it was bad enough already. This is the new normal. They're feeding the farm animals. That's what it is. The entire world is a prison. So yes, they're going to so-called reopen places, but you're just going from one part of the prison to another. And now they're getting down to the final goal to uh, sterilize us, to eradicate us, to at the very least reduce the population, whether, you know, whether it's going to be quickly or slowly, because <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see, you know, and possibly turn us into hybrids, change our DNA, all kinds of stuff. I mean, these people are pros, man. They know exactly what they're doing. They're experts on human manipulation and control.